In this age of social media, we come across innumerable apps like TikTok, Instagram, etc., where the creators introduce a new idea every day and some becomes so hyped and popular that others begin to perform the act. It becomes a trend or the act is said to be trending. Even YouTube has a trending section that features the most popular videos at a specific time. This trend stays for a short duration, that is for a few days to a few weeks. So this is a short term trend. Similarly, the stock markets also have trends that may range from short term trends to medium term trends to even long term trends depending on the duration which the trend persists in the market. So in the stock market scenario, a trend is the overall direction of the market during a specified period of time. In the stock market, there are mainly three types of trends. Number one, the uptrend. Number two, downtrend. And number three, sideways trend. There are different methods to identify the general trend of the market. But the most popular ones are by using the trend lines for visualizing the price swings and the other method includes the use of indicators like moving averages, average directional index, etc. But we will limit our discussion to only the first method. The simple reason being this is a price action course and we want to trade with cleaner charts and minimum confusion. Before moving on further, let me talk about a situation where there are three stock market participants, an investor, a swing trader and an intraday trader. If I ask them what is the present market trend, do you think all of them will have the same answer? Not necessarily. Investor could say it's a bullish market, while the intraday trader would say it's bearish trend. Even the swing trader can say there is no trend at all or the market is sideways. What is the reason for different opinions? Why do different people have different views on the market trend? given the same charts and same conditions at the same instance. The simple and straightforward answer is the time period that each trader use for their analysis. The investor might conduct his analysis on the monthly or yearly timeframes, while the swing trader might be using the weekly or daily timeframes. And for an intraday trader, the time frame might be 15 minutes or 5 minutes. Therefore, as the time frame changes, the analysis changes. So does the perspective on the market trends. So this is my first conclusion that trends are relative in nature. That is trends are dependent on time frames and it change with time frames. There is a common saying in the market that trend is your friend. I will try to bring clarity as to why this statement is relevant for our trade success. In the last episode, we have talked about the four different phases or stages of the stock market price movement. Now let us analyze in detail how the price moves. For that, let's take an example of a rubber ball for instance and let's bounce the ball once. The ball would not just take off and go out to space, right? It will come back to the ground and bounce back up. Similarly, in the stock market also, the price does not move indefinitely up or down. There will be direction changes once in a while. This nature of price oscillation is called as price swings. A typical price swing will consist of an impulse move and a corrective move. The impulse move is the strong move with stronger price action candle, while the corrective moves in a trend are generally weak or dull moves opposite to the direction of impulse move. Moving on, let's understand this by taking up each of the trend types and learning how to draw the trend line for analysis. By definition, uptrends are marked by rising data points such as higher swing highs and higher swing lows. So here the price moves up in such a way that the swings also move up, making a recognizable pattern. During an uptrend, the impulse move is a strong up move with a series of strong bullish candles which forms a higher price than the previously formed high. The impulse move is followed by a corrective move in the opposite direction of the prevailing bullish trend. The corrective move usually includes a lesser number of weaker candlesticks that forms a lower price 
but this lower price is still higher than the previous lower price found. The corrective moves are generally due to profit booking by some traders. As a rule of thumb, a trend can be confirmed as an uptrend only when the price has made at least two swings on the upside. After finding out all the higher lows, all we have to do is to draw a line connecting all the swing lows or the higher lows that we have plotted. This line connecting a series of higher lows creating a support level for future price movement is called as a trend line. It is from the vicinity of this trend line that future price movements would reverse or break out and therefore it is a very important trading zone or an area of value. The trend line is an area from which we can trade the impulse swing moves or simply we can place a buy order when the price reaches the trend line. After identifying all the higher highs, we can draw a line connecting the series of higher highs or swing highs that we have plotted and this line is called as the trend channel line which will act as an area of resistance for the prices and we can trade the corrective moves from the trend channel line or simply we can place a sell order when the price reaches the trend channel line. Coming to downtrends, by definition these are marked by falling data points such as lower swing lows and lower swing highs. In a downtrend, the price moves down in such a way that the swings also move down, making a recognizable pattern. So during a downtrend, the impulse move is strong in the downward direction with a series of strong bearish candlesticks which forms a lower price than the previously formed low. The impulse move is followed by corrective moves in the direction opposite to the prevailing bearish trend. The corrective move usually includes a lesser number of weaker or dull candlesticks that forms a higher price. But this higher price is still lower than the previous formed high. So the corrective move is generally due to profit booking by some traders who took a short trade earlier in the trend. So a trend can be confirmed as a downtrend only when the price has made at least two swings on the downside. That is, two impulse move and two corrective moves should be there. Now, after plotting all those lower high points, we can draw a trend line connecting all the swing highs or the lower highs that we have plotted. The trend line so formed acts as an area of resistance from which we can trade the impulse move to the downside or simply we can place a sell order when the price reaches the trend line. As in the previous case, if we plot the lower lows and then draw a line connecting all these lower lows, we will get a trend channel line which will act as a support for the future prices. And it is from this trend channel line that we can place buy orders to trade the corrective move. So by now, you might have the realization that the corrective moves are weak moves opposite to the existing trend, while the impulse move happens in the direction of the trend and is generally a series of stronger candles. This is the reason why we should trade the impulse move during trending market so that the probability of profit is high. This is the reason why trend is your friend. As we move on, it is very important to understand when a trend will end and when the consolidation will start. This can be identified by the use of swing transition. During an uptrend, whenever the price breaks the higher low for the first time, then it is an indication that there is a transition in the uptrend. Similarly, when a price breaks the lower highs in a downtrend, it indicates in the transition from downtrend to a sideways trend or even an uptrend. The final type of trend is not actually a trend, but it is a situation where there is no clear trend in the market, where the market stays inside a range. We have talked about ranging stages of the market as accumulation phase and distribution phase. So the price movement between two price levels is called as sideways trends. There are three types of sideways trends. Number one is the range contraction. Number two is the range expansion. And the last one is the triangular range. Let's talk about range contraction first. During range contraction, 
the levels shrink and the price action becomes almost neutral or flat. This shows the lack of any interest between buyers and sellers. The volatility in the market also drops. So range contraction happens when there is a shortening of the price bars or simply the candlestick sizes reduces. The high and low range or levels get narrower or closer to each other. And this is a strong indication that a trend reversal is coming soon. That is, if there was a prior downtrend, now the trend might change to an uptrend. But it is just an indication, it is not for sure. During a range expansion, as the name suggests, the levels will expand and the price action starts becoming visible. So range expansion is associated with lengthening of the price bar or the size of the candlesticks becomes larger and the high and low range or the levels gets wider. So range expansion usually indicates a continuation in the price pattern that is if there was a prior uptrend it is an indication that the uptrend might continue in the future but it is not for sure. Now the final type of sideways trend is the triangular range where the price shrinks or expand not between two fixed horizontal levels but rather an expanding or converging level. This is a topic which needs broader discussion so we will talk about triangle patterns and how to trade them further forward in this course. Even though the trend lines do a good job of showing overall market direction, one issue with trend line is that they often need to be redrawn. For example, during an uptrend, the price may fall below the trend line. But this does not necessarily mean that the trend is over or there is a breakdown. The price may move below the trend line and then continue rising. So in such an event, we have to adapt ourselves and the trend line needs to be redrawn to reflect the new price action. Drawing the trend lines is easy, but there can be errors in drawing the trend line. So that is why just using trend lines exclusively to determine the trend is not really advised because most professional traders also tend to look at other indicators like moving averages or average directional index to confirm the market trends because the more the confirmations, the better the analysis. So it's finally time for the most important part of the video that is identifying the strength of a trend. So generally trends can be categorized into two types depending on the strength. That is there can be a strong trend or there can be a dull or weak trend. The main parameters to keep in mind while categorizing the trends based on their strength includes a few parameters. Number one is at least two or more swings has to be there or there should be two or more points of contact in the trend line then only a trend is considered to be valid number two is the slope so the slope of a trend indicates how much the price should move each day so steeper the slope the better the trend the slope is simply the angle between the critical price level during a consolidation and the trend line. So if it was an accumulation phase and the price breaks out to an uptrend, if we take the angle between the trend line and the top price level of the accumulation phase, then we can easily find out the slope of the trend. So if the trend is too flat, strength is considered to be weak or dull. The third parameter is the time of the trend. It is actually about the time required to form a trend. If the trend took months to form, then it is considered to be more stronger than a trend which took just weeks or days to form. So more the time a trend takes to form, the more stronger it is. We can also categorize the trend based on the duration, like it could be a short term trend, an intermediate trend or a long term trend. The longer the trend remains, the stronger it is. So these are a few parameters to identify the strength or the weightage of a particular trend. Hope you have learned something new in this video and if you have, please do like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss out on the upcoming episode. So that is it for this video and I will catch you guys in the next video. Till then, 
see ya.